The Guardian, 9th of May 2023, Pakistan is assisting by Harris in Bangladesh in their battle for equality and employment, saying, we have a right to live in dignity. The Bai Harris participated in extensive rape and other atrocities committed by the Pakistani army during the East Pakistan War in what is now Bangladesh. Instead of fleeing with Pakistan, they stayed in Bangladesh. The Urdu-speaking ethnic group, which lived in confined settlement camps and struggled to obtain formal employment in Bangladesh and Pakistan for many years following India's division, is still marginalized today. Khalid Hussein was suspected of being the offspring of a war criminal on his first day of high school. Hussein, who was 12 at the time, says, The experience still shocks me today. We were immediately surrounded by a gang of Bengali kids who made it apparent that we were not welcome. But all we wanted to do was study. Hussein, a lawyer at the Council of Minorities, a human rights organization he formed in 2013, said that discrimination in his native Bangladesh was not the last time he encountered it. He has become accustomed to encountering mistrust and hatred as a member of the Bihari community, the non-Bengalis who speak Urdu who migrated from northeast India to East Pakistan and then Bangladesh after India was partitioned in 1947. The Biharis had a diplomatic problem in 1971. They were residing in Bengali-speaking East Pakistan when a savage nine-month war between the two states broke out. They were linguistically connected to Urdu-speaking West Pakistan, now Pakistan. Many Biharis supported West Pakistan during the conflict. They committed most of the war crimes, which impacted the entire community and led to their property being taken after the match. The Bihari people were compelled to settle temporarily, and most still do. The Pakistani authorities refused to help the Biharis fully return home despite repeated requests, making them stateless or stranded, as they are frequently referred to in Bangladesh. Hussain was one of the first Bihari youngsters to be admitted to a state school in 1994 after years of being unable to find employment or receive an education. Hussain asserts, we are not stranded Pakistanis. We're from Bangladesh. We have the right to live in dignity here because we were born and raised here, just like everyone else. Most of the 116 dismal camps spread throughout Bangladesh are where you may still find Biharis living on the periphery of Bangladeshi society. The largest is the Geneva camp, a vast community home to more than 40,000 Biharis in Mohammedpur, central Dhaka. Poor living conditions include crowded, deteriorating homes and complete families, often with six or more members, cohabitating in a single room. For many years, poverty in the camps was made worse by the inability of Biharis to hold formal employment due to their lack of citizenship. When Biharis received citizenship in 2008, this situation improved, nevertheless, development has been slow since then, and many Biharis are just now starting their careers. The biggest hurdle to working for by Harris continues to be discrimination, and they still have the most accessible access to informal jobs like rickshaw drivers, tea stall owners, and market vendors. However, in a recent study, there are no official statistics on unemployment in the Bihari community. Employment and income were listed as the next most critical requirements after access to clean water. Fatma Parveen often kept her Bihari heritage a secret while attending university, telling acquaintances about it only after she had acquired their trust. People always judge you, so sometimes it's just easier to hide who you are, says Parveen, a shy 20-year-old who lives in Town Hall Camp, a mile south of 10,000 Bihari-populated Geneva Camp. Despite being young, Parveen required a job to help her family's cash. Being the oldest of three daughters, life in the camp can be very challenging, I said. She claims that because of her race, she has missed out on job prospects, nevertheless, her new employment as a part-time assistant in a local politician's office results from her strong academic performance. She describes herself as feeling extremely lucky to be the first in her family to start a formal career. To pursue a profession in finance, 
Parveen plans to graduate soon. She also hopes to explore the world one day, but that goal is on hold as she awaits a passport. By Harris are progressively receiving national identity cards, although they frequently do not receive visas. The 41-year-old Mohammed Parvez is tall and has a solemn demeanor. He always knew he wanted to be his boss, and in 2015, after working various jobs for 16 years, he finally took the plunge. The three-time father now owns his own construction business. He gets up early every morning for prayer, has breakfast, and then drives his daughter to school before work. Parvez acknowledges that running your business can be challenging as the primary breadwinner. However, he stresses the importance of having an unlimited earning potential. The first member of Parvez's family to reside outside of the Bihari camps. He is constantly reminded of his family's sacrifices in the Geneva camp, which he passes daily. According to Parvez, I know many Biharis who have the drive and aptitude to lead a successful career. However, many people still have to deal with discrimination when they try to get a job. A young person's confidence may be severely damaged by this. He claims that as a result of his Bihari heritage, he was frequently undercut. People would frequently criticize him behind his back, but he continues, it made me work harder to prove myself. In Pervez's opinion, entrepreneurship holds the key to success for the Bihari people in Bangladesh. Entrepreneurship can play a crucial role in realizing potential among marginalized communities everywhere, he claims. We must find ways to advance ourselves and develop our economic opportunities. A single mother of one named Druni actor resides in the CRO camp in Dhaka. The 30-year-old woman went home to live with her mother when her husband secretly moved to the Middle East. My family don't have enough space as it is, so I felt like I was adding to their burden," says actor, who lives in a cramped area with her elderly mother and little son. Outside traffic is silenced by a refrigerator humming in the corner and a loud fan whirling above her head. After returning home, actor knew she would need to work to support herself. We were struggling, and my son wasn't getting enough to eat, she claims. She started looking for work but kept being turned down. She recounts with sadness, at one point, I became so depressed that I didn't think there was any point in living. A year later, actor was hired as the assistant coordinator at Halfila Bangladesh, a nearby non-profit that attempts to integrate camp residents into society. Actor works on a project to assist more young Biharas in enrolling in school. She processes grant applications to ensure children from low-income families receive the required assistance. It's terrific work, and I'm delighted I get to give back to my community, says the employee. Actor had acquired a new sense of freedom when she began working. She declares, I only ever want to rely on myself. I'm thrilled I have this work, it has helped me gain more confidence. Everyone, including women, should be able to work. Every one of us deserves the chance to reach the potential that God has given us and positively impact society.